Welcome back to another episode of Great Esther's Let's Play series, Series 1, Modded Minecraft. We left the last episode having completed our smeltery downstairs, which is here. All done, and it was producing clear glass, which is very, very nice to use. Um, just because you can see through it better than normal glass, which is nice. But this episode, we're going to move on to one of my favorite mods because I can move faster. I hate these boots. It may take one or two episodes to get through it all, so let's get started with the simple stuff. Let's have a look downstairs. Dug out another room, and an even bigger room for our Thorncraft stuff. Now, it does take up quite a lot of space once you start building this kind of thing. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Thorncraft will know exactly what this thing in the middle is. Um, the important point is that from this central, I think it's from the central block, it may be from one of these outside blocks, but anyway, the range of this thing, once we build it, and I'm not going to go into it just yet, is 10 blocks. So this room is 19 by 19, and so that's, 19, that's 9 blocks from that center post. So I can guarantee that anything in this room will be able to be reached, at least to the side. Around the corners, I may have to watch out, because obviously we are further out here. So the corners we may have to watch out. But for the majority of the time, we're going to want something along here anyway. And if we don't run out of room, then we'll move everything in by one. Will be a big deal. Um, so let's come back to that room once we've got started with the basics. The basics, I really should build an elevator in here. Yeah, there we go. Thank God for the jetpack. Um, yes, basics. Right. First things first, we need a Thormonomic on. Now, I have one, because I picked it up in a village. But if you don't, you're going to need a book. Or is it a bookcase? I can never remember. It could be a bookcase. Let's give it a try anyway. Um, but in order to do this, you're going to need a few things. One of them is a wand. Now, the more advanced ones you can create using some of the Thorncraft modules, but the starting one you can create um, without too much trouble, just in a regular crafting table. Any of them will do. You create this, just like a helm shape, but with nuggets, not the actual ingots. So one, two iron caps, and we want a stick for the middle. Not too hard. Iron cap at each end, and we get our first wand. This is honestly of a terrible, terrible wand. <laughs> but it gets us started. So let's see if I remembered right if it's a book or a bookshelf. Bookshelf, right click with the wand, and we get a Thormanonicon. Easy. If we open the Thormanonicon, you'll see lots of tabs down the left hand side if you're on the same version that I am. And there's more of these coming, by the way, in, in future versions. Lots more. Lots, lots, lots more. Um, and you'll see a grid now, or, or assorted icons. The point of this is that each of these nodes, when you click on it, contains information about various different points. So one of the key ones that you'll be using quite a lot is this Aspects of Magic. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the Research ones will definitely be important. Yeah. Um, but what we really want is in artificing, I think, and it's not shown by default because you have to research each of these things. So if they're flashing, you can't click on them. Um, in a future update, some of these you will be able to click on and get the research straight away, but right now you can't. You need to research these things. Um, we're going to be coming into that shortly. So if you look down through the tabs, there are lots of flashing items, lots of things that are black, so you need to get this first before you actually start seeing these things, etc, etc. So where are we going to get started? Well, we want to build a couple of items, and let's see if they are available by default. Um, let's have a look. Remember I said this is an awful wand? Well, there are upgrades to it in all kinds of different foci that you can add to the wands, easy enough. 
there we go you see the recipes not quite sure why these recipes in are here because you have to do them first before you get the recipes before you get the book even yeah some useful items in here we're going to need to get to yeah so here are the important first items this is a thermometer think of it like a um, a monocle, if you like, for uh, for looking at uh, magical things and gathering research points. Research points are used in the research table to um, unlock all of these things. And also there's Arcane Workbench, and that's a similar to a crafting grid, except it's purely for the magic stuff. It uses um, a power source called V, which is stored in the wands, and that's why I said the Nostata wand is terrible. It stores almost no V. So one of the most important, important first things, even if you don't go into the rest of Thorncraft just yet, you always want to have this, the thermometer, on you. Uh, the reason why that is, is that... Um, you want to build up the research points. You're going to be using lots of them later. This just needs two gold, a piece of glass, and one each of these shards. And you're probably going to have been collecting these while you've been mining, if you've been following along. To do that, we need an arcane workbench, which just needs a table. And a table is just two planks and three slabs. So let's make three of those, because we're going to need a, something else as well. Um, we need the research table, so... We need three tables total, so we need some planks. In fact, we need some slabs first, so let's just get those. Um, yeah, 12 should do it. Hopefully pine will work just fine. Right, three tables. So if we head downstairs into our new Thorncraft room, I really must install an elevator. I'm just short of wool at the moment. Those sheep aren't actually uh, regenerating. I need to put some, maybe some earth near them or something like that. We'll see. Uh, so tables, where do I want them? Well, for the moment, let's just put them near the entrance. One, hit it with a wand, and it's an arcane workbench. Easy. Uh, I put them on a chest between them, and then two more tables, take my one back. I think this may just be a matter of... Oh! That's annoying. I think that's the way it used to work, but right now, uh, you need some scribing tools, and I forgot to make those. Wow, that really is... Yeah, I can't convert it back. Right, uh, we don't need it right now. So, we want the thermometer. So one each of each shard, two gold, and one glass. Let's go get them. Two gold. I've got plenty of shards, but this is why you kind of just want to pick up everything you can while you're mining, one of each. And what was the other one? Glass, wasn't it? We have some here. Yeah, you'll do. And they have to be in the right arrangement as well, so water fire order. So, water, fire, water, and tree, earth, air, two gold, and glass. You're going to need this recipe a couple more times as well when we get on to one of the, the later items. But, what is this useful for? Okay, so, we want research points, and that's where our research table is going to come in. To do this, we need to scan things. You can see in the middle, if I hold down right click, I've, and at the very bottom right of the screen, I've discovered Saxon. Can't do that with every item. But I can do it with a lot. So from now on, what you're going to probably going to do, want to do is scan absolutely everything that you see. 
and you'll build up research points this way. So um, some things you won't be able to scan immediately, and that's because, um, for example, the Saxon I just discovered. Elements and aspects, if I look in here, are either primal, so those shards that we just used, or the compound. And when the compound, which is most items in the game, will have compound aspects, you need to make sure you have everything discovered that they're composed of. And you can have compound of compound of compound. So you need to make sure it's like a branching tree. You need to make sure you have all the prerequisites first before you start scanning or before you can get any of the, um, the later research uh, aspects. So I can just keep scanning. And uh, some of these things I'll be able to... To get the right distance. Some of the things I'll be able to, some of the things I won't. Grass block, no. Pine wood, no. There we go, dirt. Sand, water, maybe? Yeah, that should be easy enough. Covers them. And anything you've already discovered, it shows up in the middle, so you don't have to worry about scanning things multiple times. Just make sure that you have actually scanned them at least once. Let's kill that cow at some point. Yeah, you see a lot of these will be hard up. Fine. You've seen enough of that on screen, you get the idea. Scan everything that you can, and eventually you'll be able to scan the more complex objects, and that will all build up research points. And now, hopefully, let's get that moonstone. If do I have any feathers? Of course I don't, which means I need chickens. Got plenty of ink, which is one of the reasons why our ink farm was so good. We're going to need that downstairs. I'll grab a chest while I'm doing it. And I'm going to need another table, so I need slabs. So, research. Research is a mini game, and it has all of this that I've just described to you. Don't worry about it too much. You need some black dye, glass file, which is just three glass and clay. Fair enough. But also feather. Back when I've grabbed a few chickens. So I'm back with a few feathers. Killed a few chickens. Brought one back, I need to bring more to make a farm, but there's my recipe and here's my files. And let's just make two lots, we're going to use them for other things. And will this work in regular crafting or am I going to need, I wonder, a bit arcane? Nope, that'll do. Great. So now, That is a research table. Just right click with your scribing tools. And here's the research points we were gathering with the thermometer. So ideally, you want to start with a lot of those uh, to actually get started. Um, simultaneously, you want to keep a stack of ink nearby because those scribing tools, you can't see it right now, but if I, I don't know, um, Yeah, if you choose two two aspects, by the way, and combine them, you get a chance of, of creating another one. Um, which ones you actually create depends on uh, all kinds of different things. And it's just a chance, so there you go, see, Victus. 
And uh, you can get the, these are the compound aspects. You can get them from other items in the game using the thermometer. But right now I'm just wondering, um, yeah, I'm going to need to get some research. So first of all, before I do that, let me go and pick up a few more items and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've put a stack of paper in here or half a stack of paper. And instead of trying to combine these to make compound aspects, I'm just going to choose one and try to make some research. Great, I've got some research. Paving stone of travel. Not the most useful thing in the world. Um, at least not right now. Nope. Essence of false life. Nothing I really need. One photo guy. That's not too bad. And it's actually a pretty easy one. So how this works, it's a mini game. The idea is to get from this lit node a path all the way through the others, and you can't split. So this has to be a single unbroken line starting from this, and you can only head out in one direction from the lit node. So you can't split one way and the other. These are going to be all over the place in, in other nodes. Um, the idea, and you can see the durability now dropping, you, you could just refill this with ink, by the way. So if this runs out, take it out, combine it with an ink in a trifling table, and it's full again. So we can move these things around. Easy enough, isn't it? But how do we link to this? Well, these nodes will jump and link together when there's no more than one space. So if this node was here, they'd link automatically because there's only one space. It would also link if it was here, if it was here, if it was here, as long as it isn't blocked by one of these inactive runes. What we want is active runes. And the way you do that, in this case, we can just use Ignis and it's done. And I think that's pretty much on purpose just because it's a starting one. But the idea is once you've found out which of these runes on the page corresponds to Ignis in this case, you can deactivate it again just by clicking this and then clicking this button, move them around and then reactivate them once they're in position to cause this chain. But as, as we are, they started in the right positions and the chains created. Probably as a tutorial, it's not too hard at the beginning. These get quite hard, and there are some that are impossible. Don't think they're all possible, they're not. So just bear that in mind. But really, all you're really doing is moving these around until they link. I, I, there is a very start, you can't move them when they're active like this. But um, with one of the later researchers, you'll get the ability to move them, I think one space? Yeah, one space sounds about right. Um, when they're still active. So you don't have to keep using up your research points and keeping these research points as high as possible is going to be very, very useful because some of the compound aspects, they run low and then you have to start combining two together to make a new one. And, and you work up through recipes that way. It, it, it's, it's a little annoying put it that way for, for some of the research. So that's why in the, in the upcoming versions, there's going to be uh, an improvement here. You're going to be able to just click on things in, in the um, Thormanomicon for some things and get those research uh, straight away. But as we are, we can just grab this, right click, and we've got the one foci research, which as you'll see, this, this is highlighted, one foci. And the first one you get is a fire focus. So we could make this if you want to. I generally don't, but you can. Um, the only downside is you kind of need these, these, these things at the bottom is what you need on the wand. And I don't think we have a very good wand right now. So one of the first priorities really is crafting an improved wand. So it'd be nice if we can get some of these other research uh, aspects, uh, research um, items. To do that, we kind of need more of these because this will only trigger when you've selected the right one. I mean, transvector interface, yeah, I'm not going to need that anytime soon. One focus activation, that's not too bad. This is one reason why we have this chest. Um, you're going to need lots of these, and maybe you want a chest on the other side, but things you don't want just yet. And we can just, you know, work our way through um, trying to find these things. One focus shock, that's fun. Focus frost. Nitol. Nitol's ones we definitely want, so. Uh, we even have two to connect. Sounds easy enough. Let's activate them. 
and it's nowhere near and our Lux has gone. That's the downside. If you don't have enough research points, you can't reactivate, deactivate, etc. So we can't rescan things because we already know this. You have two options. One is to go and find something else with Lux on it. And if I could scan that, uh, but it might work with regular glowstone. Let's just give that a try. It's mostly common sense stuff. So Lux or light you can get from things emitting light. So let's see if I can actually scan glowstone. Let's just create a... It will probably depend if there's something else on it. No, not yet. In fact, can we just try one of those? Nope. So we have to use the other method. And the other method, if we go to our aspects of magic, we'll see to make looks, you can combine air and fire. Okay. Also, by the way, if you're in your inventory and you hold down shift, if you, I wonder if I can scan some of this. I need something that I've already scanned really to in order for this to work. There we go. The uh, granum, if I hold shift over anything that I've scanned, you'll see what aspects it has on it. That's a fairly easy way to see things in inventories and what you've not scanned yet and then go through and drop them on the floor and scan them for a bit. You can do lots of things like that. But if we combine air, fire, looks, see, looks. So now I know it's this rune, I need to just move to here maybe. So let's deactivate it. And Nitor. Nitor is a very nice research point. Nitor is a light emission, uh, emitting magical, uh, magical item. Just looks like a glowing ball of light, really. And it's useful because one of the other items we're going to build here is a cauldron. Now, can I do that by default? I wonder. Looks like it, because the crucible, uh, not, yeah, we're going to build a crucible. A cauldron's the item that you actually get before you start. So we're going to build a cauldron first. That's a, you know, a vanilla item, if I remember rightly. Um, iron. Cauldron, and we should probably, it's usually a very good idea to have an infinite water source nearby. So let's go and create that as well. Because your crucible, you're going to be filling with water quite a bit. Not as much as you're used to in older versions, but still, yeah, quite a bit. So here, put one water bottle at the back, and one at the front. There we go. And I can put this anywhere, but because of what's going to be coming out of it sometimes, I may want to separate a little bit from everything else. Mm, yeah, let's just put it here for now. Um, and we need a wand again. And right click. That's now crucible. Now, we do need a heat source, and I usually use Nighthawk because it's kind of in theme with Thorncraft, but you can use other things, and one of the things that's very useful, or very easy in our case, to use, because we have this, is some lava. So, 
one bucket of lava will do. You never have to. It never uses it up, so you just put whatever you like under here. You can even have something like some kind of fire, whatever you want to, as long as it's a heat source that'll do. Lava. There we go. Probably replace that with Nitor because it it's kind of fancy, quite nice. And how does this work? Well, you fill it up with water. Not like that. You fill it up with water <laughs> without drowning yourself. And now you just drop stuff into it. So for a second, let's go back to Night Hall. Here it is. So what this is saying is you need to drop items first into the cauldron that make up three Ignis, three Lux, and three Potentia. Once all of those are in the the cauldron, um, crucible, sorry, to make night ore, you need to drop in a catalyst then, which is a piece of glowstone. So first of all, we need to find something that has three Ignis, three Lux, and three Potentia, and that's not going to be a single item. Now, it's either going to be, if I remember right, it's either going to be a torch, well, that's our Lux to start off with, so three torches would do. There we go. We need something with three Ignis and three Potential. I think coal will do that, but in a different ratio than you'd expect. So let's just check coal out. It could be coal, could be redstone. I can never remember which way around it is. Let's have a look. Assuming I can actually scan it, of course. Let's just try coal first. There we go. So two of each on coal. But because I want three of each, we need to put three coal in. So that's be six of each of those. So we then need uh, however many torches it needs to make six lux. Let's just have a look. Uh, whoops. Torch. Do we have any? Oh, I've got a channel with Andrew. That's silly. Uh, one. So I'm going to need six torches, two coal. Easy enough. And one glowstone. Now, if you get your recipes wrong, or if it takes too long, if you do, if you take too long leaving it in here, this crucible is going to break down these elements into um, primals eventually. It'll take a bit of time. See how this is bubbling? This means it's ready. So we don't want that to happen, because as soon as that starts happening, it will then overflow, much like we did with water, but with the purple substance. It's, it's, I think it's called taint. It's usually temporary unless your configs have made it such, but what we, we don't really want it. So ideally, when possible, you don't want to put extra items in, because the extra ingredients is going to make all this temporary nasty stuff that we really don't like. So, fairly quickly then. Uh, let's move this out of the way. And this, don't want to put the wrong thing in. So we want six torches, two coal, and a glowstone. And we get one night or back. Easy. And you are done. We can empty this crucible out by using our wand. I think it's shift right click. That releases into the environment, and this is the nasty stuff that we don't actually like. Now, can I get rid of it? So you used to be able to do this. Let's see. No, that may depend on your config and your server. It will go away on by itself, but it's nasty stuff, and you don't really want it. And I know why it was there. I should have put two glowstone in, not one. Uh, so if you're following directly along, sorry. But if you're not, two glowstone, not one. And now we should be able to replace There we go. Much nicer, much more in theme. Still can't get rid of that. Annoying. May change my server config just so that we can get rid of it. It's not too important right now. 
So what we want to do, probably between this episode and next, is do a lot of this research, get a lot of these items. You're free to do them in whatever order you like. Uh, here's some advice on various ones. Equal trade is very, very useful. Um, that allows us to change blocks without destroying them and replacing them with another block. Focus patch is useful. One of the next things we really want, though, however, is this great wood one core and gold caps. And to do that, we need to do some research. Um, what else will be good to research? Now that I've got a thermometer, I can now look for goggles of revealing. That's another one, good one to research. In fact, almost essential. Uh, arcane stone we've been given. Um, that's one of the building materials we're going to be using. Uh, the enchanted fabrics are a good one to research. Arcane lamp is. Uh, Golomancy will get to not important straight away. One of the biggest ones, however, is these this research expertise, and then there's like there's our further version research mastery. They're very important because of how we're going to have to recharge our wands. I'll come back to that in the next episode. For right now, just try and concentrate on getting them as soon as possible on your research table. Um, this will help you a great, great deal later. Similarly, on this side, we want advanced node tapping as fast as possible. And probably the next one as well when it pops up for you. I'm not going to spoil it too much. Um, you're going to need to get those yourself. Um, there are guides on the internet if you really want to cheat. But at least the first time through, try and do it yourself and um, have some fun on using various aspects. Uh, there's also magic bees installed. We don't need that yet. Nope, none of this stuff. Just concentrate on the bottom left, the bottom right, the basic. And some of these items, like the, the gold one caps and the great one cores and other things like that. I really don't like this stuff. Yeah. So we've got the basic basic uh, machines, if you like, when I call them machines. Research table, arcane work table. Let's leave my wand in here. Chest to store some of our stuff. We're going to get to this one soon. And I'm going to do some elevators, I think, in between the episodes, just to briefly check on various different things that we've done. We've still haven't got any more uh, seed yet. This is going to take a little bit of time. It's only something like a 2 or 5% chance to get an extra seed, even on endstone. So it takes a long time. Um, once you start getting like 10 seeds or so, it's, it's fine. You know, you get it fairly often, but with one, it's going to take a while. Wool still hasn't grown. I really need to find out why they don't grow. I think it's just lack of a grassy block or something like that. And yeah. We're going to want a chicken farm down here as well. Uh, mainly because feathers. If I can scan this. I can't. Okay, just trust me that feathers is one of the actual um, aspects that we need uh, later on. Um, checking out the rest. Everything is running. We're doing just fine elsewhere. I think that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Um, go out there, scan everything you see. Go out there, uh, try as many research points as you can and try to open some of those research points up. When I come back next episode, I will have opened them up. I don't want to spoil it, so um, you're going to need to do that yourself. If you want spoilers, look on the internet. There are ways to get it. Uh, but at least enjoy the game the first time around. I've done it a few times. I yeah, it's not a game for me anymore, which is why I'm looking forward to the update where you can just click on various things to actually get the um, the research. But that's going to take um, a little bit of time to get to release. So for now, thanks for watching and I will see you next episode.